to be kind to one another. Let us go into the word of the Lord very quickly. Time is running out, amen. I'm so blessed to be here, amen. Every time I come here, amen, I feel good, good, good. I feel good, wonderful, good. <laughs> Every time I think about Jesus, <laughs> you guys are going to make me praise all morning, amen. <clears throat> right, second, first, second Kings chapter, no, sorry, sorry, first Kings 22 verse 51. If you're there very quickly, turn there very quickly. If you're there, say praise the Lord. If you're not, say help me, God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> While you're turning there, I forgot to honor my rice to my peas, my ackee to my salt, to my salt fish. Amen. My yam to my potato. My sugar cane, that's what she is, my sugar cane. I want to honor my wife, Prophetess K. Van Ranky. Can you clap, please? <laughs> Amen. She's the reason I look this good. Amen. If she wasn't around, I'd look 60% less good. But be 100% on time. Praise God. Let's go into the scripture. 1 Kings 22, verse 51. Amen. Are we there? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says this. Ahazah, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel in Samaria the 17th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned two years over Israel. And he did evil, watch this, in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father and his mother, and the way of his mother, and in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. For he served Baal. And worshipped him and provoked to anger the Lord God of Israel according to all that his father had done. Quick switch me to 2 Kings chapter 1 verse 1. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Ahazah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go! Inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. Verse 3. And but the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and say unto them, Is it not because there is not a god, watch this, in Israel, that you go to inquire of Baal Zebub, the god of Ekron? Now therefore thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but thou shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. And when the messengers turned back to him, he said to them, Why are ye now turned back? And they said to him, There came a man up to meet us and said to us, Go, turn again unto the king that sent you. And say to him, thus saith the Lord, is it not because there is a God in Israel that thou, set, that thou sendest to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed from which thou gone up, but thou shalt surely die. Seven, verse seven. And he said to them, what manner of man was he which came up to you? This is the king speaking. And told you these words. And they answered him and said, he was a hairy man. And girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, aha. Uh -huh. It is Elijah the Tishbite. And the king sent unto the captain, we're coming down in a bit. King sent unto the captain of 50 with his 50, and he went up to him, and, and behold, he sat on top of the hill, and he spake unto him, and, and thou, he said, Thou man of God, the king have said, Come down. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, Watch this, if I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his 50. Watch this, verse 11. And again, the king, this is the king, again the king, he also sent unto him another captain of 50 and answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus saith the king, of, the king said, come down quickly. And Elijah answered to them and he said, if I be, tell your neighbor, if you be a man or a woman of God, 
Hallelujah. It said, let fire come down from heaven and, let, and consume thee and thy fire and the 50. And the fire came down from heaven and consumed his 50. And he sent a, again a captain of the third 50 and with his 50. And the third captain of the 50 went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these 50 servants be precious in your sight. And verse 14, behold there, were, there came fire down from heaven and burnt up the other two captains of the former 50s with their 50s. Therefore, let my life now be precious in thy sight. I'm going to stop at 15. And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, go down with him. Be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him unto the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, I think the custom is here to, is to bless the reading of the word, yes? Hallelujah. Can you guys help me with that? Amen. Praise God. We're going to bless the reading of the word. How do we say that together, please? Let the words of my mouth, my heart, be acceptable unto God. Amen. 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 I just want to quickly pray myself. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this moment that we have to spend together in your house. Where your, present, your presence is present, oh God. Where your spirit is here, oh God. So Father, I thank you, oh God, for this wonderful house, oh God, that you have made. And Father, let the words of my mouth meditation my heart be accepted in your sight. Use me, God, as your oracle this morning to speak life into your people. Let me decrease and you increase, oh God. And let the spirit of God move in power and authority in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says about Ahaza. Praise God. Now Ahaza, amen, the Bible says was the son of Ahab. Amen. But the, he, the Bible doesn't tell you who his mother is. But if you know by scripture, the mother of Ahab, the wife of Ahab was Jezebel. Praise God. Hallelujah. And you see, when, when God removed Ahab and removed Jezebel, Ahaza took the place of his parents as king. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that when he had his opportunity to rule, he decided decided to continue the curse that was in his bloodline. Hallelujah. He decided that I'm not going to rule the way God expects me to rule. I'm going to do evil in the sight of the Lord. Amen. And you see, God was revealing to Ahaza, amen, that even though you come from something, you don't have to be it. Even though you've come from somewhere, you don't have to repeat it. Even if you've been from a place where everybody about you don't love of God. You can love God. You can worship God. You can be right for God. Whatever they do is no connection to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so instead of following his creator, he followed his culture. Hallelujah. And sometimes, amen, in order to release the man of woman of God in you, you've got to fight the culture that you're coming from going to fight the background you're coming from. You're going to fight what the enemy put in your bloodline. You're going to fight the witchcraft and the obia man trying to do to you. You're going to fight to some things in order to release the man or woman of God you are. And Ahaza didn't understand that God was giving his family a lifeline. Hallelujah. And instead of him recognizing that he was the one, like a Moses in his generation, to turn a tide in the bloodline, he continued what was going on. God said to tell me to tell somebody, the reason you've gone through so much, because you're called to turn the tide. You can't come on, let me say it again. The reason you've gone through so much difficulty, because you're the one meant to evangelize to your family. You're the one meant to turn whatever's going on. You're the one meant to bring the rich. You're the one meant to bring the prosperity. You're the one that's meant to open the door and redeem the bloodline. Hallelujah. And you see, there's some things you can't find till you find God. Hallelujah. There's some things you can't do to you. To you get God. He was in a godly position without God. See, some things can't hold into your hands. I can't stay into your hands until you get God. 
Some things can't manifest in your life until you get God. Some things can't become what they need to become. Some things slip out of your finger because your life ain't right with God. But when you get right with God, God says what I was giving you was just a little bit. I'm about to release more and more and more. Just come into alignment with me. Oh, come on, tell your neighbor, just come into alignment with the Holy Ghost. Just come into alignment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you see, he had a problem. Amen. What do you do when your mother is a witch? Hallelujah. And your father is an effeminate man. Praise God. What do you do when everything you've been grown up into is antichrist? Hallelujah. What do you do when you realize the culture that raised you goes against the creator that made you? What do you do, amen, when you realize there's things in your lineage that you've been inherited and you have that you need to now deal with or you're going to deal with you? There's some things we've got to deal with in the bloodline before it deals with us. Hallelujah. There's some demons we've got to stamp under our feet before it comes for us. If it's going to be you or me, devil, it's going to be you. Hallelujah. If you think this, uh, oh, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. If you think you can hold back what's mine, if you think you can take what's mine, if you think you can take my blessing, no, I've got the power of the Holy Ghost on me. I'm not going to let the enemy enter anymore in my bloodline. And the Bible says that, listen, amen, this is why the Bible hates the blood of Jesus. Oh, come on, somebody. Because the Bible says that life is in the blood. Oh, And that's why the Bible says that the blood was shed for the remission of sins. Hallelujah. And when the blood was shed, it gave us access to his life. And that's what sometimes we don't need a prayer. We don't need a worship song all the time. Sometimes we just need the blood. Oh, come on. Some of you just need a blood confusion. Contusion. To get rid of the confusion. You need the blood. When when the blood enters your blood, when the blood covers you, when the blood over uh, smothers you, what happens? The life in God renews you through the blood. Oh, come on, devil. You can't touch me, devil. I'm under the blood. You can't hold me, devil. I'm under the blood. No weapon formed or fashioned against me can prosper. I'm under. When I'm under the blood, I'm under the covering. When I'm under the blood, oh come on, I'm under the promise. When I'm under the blood, I'm under the covenant. Some people may be under protection by the police. You may be under protection by many things, but nothing can protect you. Only the blood can protect you. Only the blood can release you. Only the blood can, re- can take you out. Only the blood can take you from what you are into what you're meant to be. God was surprised by Ahaza. He said, have you not learned by the mistakes of your fathers? Hallelujah. Praise God. Listen, I tell you, there's this movie. What do you, have you seen this movie, Black Panther? Who's seen Black Panther? Come on, some of you, don't, don't pretend. It's okay. Amen. Some of you are scared to put your hands up. Amen. It's okay, pastor. Pray for them. They, see, they watch the secular. Praise God. <laughs> and in the Black Panther the man get buried under the water, under the sand and he's calling for the ancestor and he's seeing the ancestor and his father come back from uh, from the grave tell him you are the black panther listen i don't need no ancestor i don't need no father from the grave i've already got a father in heaven and hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come he told me who i am he redeemed me from sin he delivered me from my past what you don't need is hocus pocus you need jesus so elijah said to him listen you already done see ahab tried to trick the spirit. Ahab tried to dress up like Jehoshaphat and go into battle, even though the spirit said to Ahab, you surely you're going to die. And he tried to trick the spirit. He tried to dress up like somebody else, but the arrow missed Jehoshaphat and still hit Ahab. And he said to, God was saying, hey Ahaza, don't you see you can't change what's written in the spirit by doing your natural things. You can't change what's written in your bloodline by natural ways. You can't work it off. 
off. You can't jump it off. You can't roll in mud. You can see every witch and you can see every warlock. They can't change nothing. You can see every spell, every war, sorcerer, every opium man, every opium woman, every human, shaman, and demon. They can't change nothing. The only way out of what you're in is through the power of Jesus Christ. So God said, to, uh, God said to Elijah, get rise up, Elijah. And when he rose up, he said, go to Ahaz and talk to him. And when Elijah gets there, Elijah says, what? There's no God in Israel that you have to go and ask of Ekron, or Belzebub. Hallelujah. You see, heaven was shocked. We've seen your bloodline, but you haven't discerned your bloodline. Hallelujah. Sometimes you're going through things, but you didn't discern it was a demon. You're going through things, you didn't discern it was a generational curse. You're going through things, you didn't discern it was something hereditary. You're going through things that the spirit says you need to deal with. Otherwise, the same fate that happened to them is going to happen to you. And sometimes the spirit wants to wake up your natural mind and say, look into it spiritually. Hallelujah. You're chasing after Belzebub, Ahaza, just like your mother did. But you're in the same position your father was. You're repeating the sin, which means that I put you here because there must be something blessed in your bloodline. But you're choosing the same errors. Hallelujah. Sometimes I travel around the world, Pastor. Amen. And I meet, sometimes when you travel around Africa, I've gone around Africa, I've gone around a place in Europe preaching the gospel, and I meet people with the same conditions, amen? I meet somebody who married a, um, um, a, bo, a, a boo-boo, amen? A boo-boo think it was a Boaz, amen? And then you see their cousin married boo-boo, and their uncle and their uh, auntie married boo-boo, and nobody's finding no Boaz. Amen? And when they should be finding roof, they're finding loose. Amen. Praise God. And they're marrying loose woman. Loose this woman. Loose this woman. And everybody's given a problem in the family line. And they come to me. They say, man of God, please pray for me. Pray for my husband. Pray for my wife. And I said to them, listen, what kind of man or woman did your parents marry? And they say, it's the same thing in all of our family. I said, don't you understand the devil's trying to put you into captivity? The devil's trying to hold you. Amen. That's why the Bible says that our weapons of our warfare, come on somebody, are not carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Hallelujah. That means that you've got to understand that whatever is happening and is manifesting naturally has an origin somewhere. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Rabashike. There's something trying to invade my bloodline to stop me from invading the earth for Jesus. Oh, Kabo Soto. There's something trying to block me. There's something trying to hold me. So, oh, come on. The Bible says, unless you bind the strong man and his goods, what's going to happen? happen is he's a strong man is going to bind you. Some of you can't get weak in this hour. You've got to bind him. Some of you can't get weak in this hour. You've got to pray him out. Some of you can't get down in this hour. You've got to tread upon the enemy. Some of you can't go weary. Don't get weary in well doing for in due season we have to reap. And Ahaza was like who is this man? Who is this man? Because Ahaza fell down. This is the story. I'm going past part of the story. Ahaza fell down. He's injured. He's going to inquire of the Obia man. Got that version of the Obia man. He says, have you, God is wondering, have you not learned? Amen. You see, the, book, the Bible is a book of history to give revelation of man's condition in sin. Hallelujah. So man's condition in sin, sin is repetitive and sin is predictable. Hallelujah. When you see somebody in sin, you know from drink will come, smoking will come, this will come, that. The demons work together in people's lives. Hallelujah. The spirits work together, Pastor, in people's lives. And you can say, people say, that person's on a slippery slope. 
Amen. Because once the enemy sees an open door in your life, he says that person has been called by God. And when the enemy hears the prophetic word, the release of your life, he says, watch, I'm going to make sure that person doesn't make it. And some of us have interpreted our warfare for our suffering silently in the Lord. Praise God. We're suffering and we're saying, God, I'm going to change it, please, Lord, help me, help me, help me. Oh. And he's saying, what? It's God. God is looking at what? Can't you see the snake in your bloodline? You need to take the sword of the Spirit. You need to get that thing out. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, I'm covered by the blood. Oh, come on, Rabasike. God deliver us this morning. God heal us this morning. God set us free this morning. God break some things off us this morning. God let us go back into who we meant to be. Hallelujah. And so Elijah came and said, is there no God in Israel? Amen. Can't you see that life has given you a chance to be a different person? Hallelujah. That's why sometimes we're playing, we're having problems, but we're running to more problems, but we're not running to Jesus. Hallelujah. We're running to more things and we're, our flesh is saying, go everywhere but church. Sit down everywhere but church. Go buy yourself a nice bar, a, a nice tub of hagen dust ice cream, stuff your face and rub the food over your face, but go everywhere but church. Get on the phone, call Tyrone and moan, but go anywhere but church. Because the enemy knows that the moment you get into church, the moment you get into the house of God, the moment you get under prayer, the moment you get under, uh, come on, under worship, the moment you get under the the Holy Ghost, the thing has to break. So Ahaza was surprised about his manifestation. He said, who told you? Who came and told you that I'm going to die? And then he asked for his description. And he said, the Bible says that Elijah was a hairy man. Amen. Some of you who are hairy might be prophets. Amen. Amen. Don't pluck off your mustache. You might just be a prophet. Amen. Don't shave up your armpits. You might be a prophet. <laughs> Amen. He was a hairy man. And he wore a girdle around his waist. And he said, huh, I know who this is. This is Elijah, the Tishbite. Hallelujah. And you see, the problem with Ahaza, he could discern on the outside. But he couldn't discern on the inside. Hallelujah. Praise God. You see, your culture makes you discern on the outside. But the creator the outside he looks on the inside the Lord says this I don't look how man looks I look on the heart that's why sometimes when you're under an attack when you're under a warfare sometimes it takes somebody to see in the spirit who you really are because when life starts to label you you need somebody with prophetic vision to say that's not you come out of that that's not who you're meant to be come out of that you're not meant to be dusty and busty you're meant to be preaching come out of that sometimes you need people who can see past what you're saying, what you're looking, how you're acting, and say, I'm not letting you go. You may hate me for calling you every day for church. I'm not letting you go because I'm calling you out of that thing. Sometimes you've got to labor with some folk who can't see themselves. Sometimes you've got to labor with some people who don't know themselves. Or they listen, you pray for them, they go back to smoking weed. You pray for them, they go back to drinking. You're praying and you're praying and you're giving them scripture. But one day, one day, the Spirit of God takes over and you'll see that your labor has not been in vain because sometimes some people need people to pull them out. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I need you to pull me out. And instead of honoring the prophet who's come to speak truth into his life, what does Ahazah do? He says, I'm going to send a captain of 50 men to bring this man down and destroy him. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, blessed are you. When you suffer um, persecution, for so they did the prophets before you. Because anytime, anyone who must live godly must suffer persecution. 
Hallelujah. Some people, when they're under a spell, will hate you when you try to pray for them. Will hate you when you try to help them. Oh, some of my enemies are people I've helped. Some of my enemies are people I've gone Nando's with. I've gone TK. I've gone to Dallas BBQs with. I've sat down with them. I've paid for their meal. I've tried to help them. And then sometimes you're wondering, God, I do so many good things for people, but they turn on my back because the enemy has put something in them to stop you from delivering them in the bloodline. And that's why Jesus said, pray for your enemies, pastor. Hallelujah. In order to be a change in the earth, you've got to learn how to look past the natural and see the spirit. I see what you're doing, devil. You don't want me to be friends with that person. I see what you're doing, devil. You're trying to put a Jezebel spirit in the family to stop us from coming together. I see what you're doing, devil. You're trying to cause brother against brother, mother against brother. We've got to secure the bloodline. We've got to secure the church. We can't come against each other. We've got to stand with one another. We've got to display the love of God. Some of the devil mash up, or mash up, or mash up your family. Hallelujah. And sometimes it's over silly things. Oh, you know, she take my crap pot and she never bring it back. And I've seen some things in church where I'm shocked by it, pastor. Amen. Oh, you see how she look for me. Mm, she, look, she look at me like she smell dirty water. I'm Jafakin right now, amen? I've been practicing my Jamaican accent with my cousin Linton, amen? Praise God. And you see, some people get into some mess, and the enemy can come in so easily. Hallelujah. We're not, we're, 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 what happened? You used to be best friends. You used to pray in together. Oh, you know, well, well, you know, well, 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 you know, well, you know, well, well, what, 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 well, I don't even remember. But I'm not her friend. (laughs) And what is happening? The devil enters not just our natural bloodline, but now our Holy Ghost spiritual bloodline. Where your destiny helper is located. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody. Come on, hallelujah. God taught me something. The people that are meant to help you are hidden behind their bad manners. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said to me, listen, uh, listen, some people, are, <clears throat> some people are bad breed, amen? They talk funny, they act funny, amen? But listen, they can, when you get past that, they can help you out. They can help you out, pastor, amen? And some of us, God tests us. He lets us be these kind of people to see if we're really humble like the lamb, Amen. Because some of us, we look all nice on Sunday. Monday morning, we're slapping people in, in, in what's it called, uh, in, in safe, what's it, shop right. <laughs> and nowadays, you can't slap nobody and get away with it because nowadays they have their phones. They take a picture of you. That is Sister Shirley slapping. The, the, she's the usher and she just slapped some woman at the cash register. And instead of covering your sins like Noah did, amen, they put it on social media. Mommy got to make some money from this. Put it on Instagram. Start a real church lady who prayed for me on Sunday, slapping them on Monday. And then the world comes in and says, we don't want to go to that kind of church. Because them people there are hypocrites. They're the pray you slap you kind of Christians. Pray you chat, you kind of Christians. Hallelujah. And God is saying, listen, you've got to defeat that thing in your bloodline. If you don't defeat that in your bloodline. Let me, let me break it down. Some people want to be preachers. Hallelujah. Before I knew these great men and women of God, knew they were my family. God spoke to me when I was eight years old. He said, I'm going to be a prophet to the nations. Hallelujah. I didn't know I had family. I didn't know. I, I remember telling this testimony everywhere I went. I said to people that God said that I'm number three. And I said, God, I said, when I went to church, some church mother said, no, don't say you're number three. You're number one in Jesus. I said, sorry, lady. God said I'm number three. Hallelujah. And then, and then, uh, and then, um, and then he said to me, and then one time he said to me, he said to you, you might even be lower than that. Because <laughs> I'm raising people up right now in your bloodline. Hallelujah. And then when I met pastor, he said, what do you say? He said, your uncle was number one or somebody was number two. Yeah, there's three, three, I think I'm either three or four, isn't it? 
Three. I'm number three. I'm number three. I'm four. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God was telling me, listen, the number was not significant. He was saying to me, you're not the first I've raised up in your family. Study your bloodline and see where the serpent struck. Hallelujah. And he said this, see, see as a privilege that the serpent struck you. I said, what do you mean, God? I said, what do you mean? A privilege. He goes, because the devil don't spend no time on anybody who's not important. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said to me, stop looking at things fleshy. Stop looking at things carnally. Start seeing in the spirit that if the enemy has taken time to attack you, Hallelujah. There must be something that you are called to do. Someplace you are called to go. And then one day I had a dream and the Lord took me. He said to me, I'm going to show you heaven. I was excited. He goes, but first I'm going to show you hell. And I had a dream and God took me all the way down to hell. And I remember I was walking down hell with this, and this angel and he showed me hell. And I saw a picture in the, in, on the wall. And it was a wanted poster, and it had my face on it. Praise God. And I looked at that, and he said, see, this is the warfare that's assigned to your call. Hallelujah. People looking at you on the natural will not see the war that's happening over your life in the spirit. That's why we've got to not look at people naturally. We've got to war for souls. We've got to pray for souls. Oh, come on, World Harvest Deliverance Center. There's a war going on in the spirit. You've got to pray for every single person in this area. Bring them out of something. Break it off them. When they can't fight for themselves, pray for them. From that moment on, God changed my heart. He said, have no enemy with man. Have enemies. Your enemy is the devil. Hallelujah. Make up quickly with your family, with your brother. Because together you've come to destroy and demolish and put the enemy under your feet until the Lord Jesus returns. No matter what happens. My uncle could never be my enemy. My cousins could never be my enemy. Even if Satan comes in, I'll love them through that. Hallelujah. Because I don't make enemies in the army that I'm in. Hallelujah. Somehow the devil got into the church and he made us enemies of each other. He made the fight go from him to each other. And that's why the Lord has to send the prophets to say, wake up church. Our enemy is not natural. It's not carnal, but it's spiritual. And we've got to learn how to deal with spiritual things spiritually. Oh, I'm coming down now. So when they came against Elijah in the physical, watch what he did. They came up, pastor, and they brought a captain, and they brought 50 men. And they, and they looked at the captain, and, and the captain says, Elijah the Tishbite, come down. And he said to them, listen, you are not my enemy. Hallelujah. So I don't need to get down to argue with you. I don't need to prove myself to you. I don't need to have take vengeance out on you. Like some believers do nowadays. I don't need to do no Facebook post about you. I don't need to share nothing. Oh, there, my enemies will die tomorrow. I don't need to pray for them to die. Amen. He looked at his so-called enemies in the flesh. And he said, this is what I'm going to say to you. If I be a man of God, I'm going to let the Lord answer by fire. And he restarted to fight, not from the natural, but from the spirit. And when he fought from that place, his enemies were quickly consumed. His problem was quickly over. God is saying to somebody, listen, don't fight from the natural anymore. 
call. Fight from your Holy Ghost identity. Fight from your position under the blood. Fight from your position as a child of God. Fight from your position as someone redeemed, sanctified, saved, delivered. And don't get down from your high place. Don't get down from your high place. Just release the fire. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, come on, somebody. We can't be distracted in these end days, getting into fights with each other. Devil, now is the time the church is releasing fire. Now is the time we're going to release the fire. Now is the time we're going to release the fire. What is the point me coming down when the God is seated? heavenly places. What is the time? What is the point of me coming down where the Lord has placed me? Devil, now we're going to release the fire. Amen. And he released the fire and the first 50 will consume pastor. But the man is still looking. The king is still angry. The demon in him is still angry. How dare you try to deliver me? How dare you try to correct me? So he sends another 50. And Elijah says again, if I be a man of God, let the fire come down. And the fire came down again and the third captain comes and he says please 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 the, I'm just doing my job uh, you could, the fire came on the other two but please have mercy on me and the only time he came down is when there was a soul who was repentant oh come on somebody oh come on somebody come on somebody God wants to keep you in the place he needs you and the only time you should move is to reach the lost is to reach the unsaved is to reach the people who need your help. Don't spend time arguing with nobody. Don't spend time messing with nobody. We've got a job to do on the earth. We need to redeem the lost at any cost. But in order to redeem them, you've got to send down fire on the enemy. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody. Oh, Robo Soto, in order to re in order to break through, you got to carry the fire. In order to break some issues, you got to release the fire. There's some things that will not go until you're butted up by fire. There's some enemies that won't die until you release the fire. There's some poverty spirits. There's some spirits of lack. And the Lord is saying today, today, today is the day of visitation. It's time to release the fire. Okay. Come on, somebody. Oh, come on, somebody. Am I talking to a church this morning? Am I talking to a church this morning? World harvest deliverance. We've got work to do. Time to release the fire. Release the fire on every principality. Power. Works of wickedness. Works of darkness. Today, today, we release the fire. Come on, somebody. Stand up on your feet. Come and say, your neighbor, I'm getting ready for fire. Oh, come on, shite. My breakthrough needs fire fire. My breakthrough needs power. Oh, come on. What he did, uh, he didn't find it in himself. Uh, he asked the Lord and the Lord sent it. Come on, somebody. Ask the Lord. I need fire against, uh, against the issue in my life. Send your fire against my sickness. Send your fire against my disease. Send my fire against my... Come on. 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 Begin to pull it down. Send the fire, Lord. Come on, come on, come on, come on, worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Come on, the old church used to say, fire, fire, fire. Fire fall on me. Come on, on the day of Pentecost, let fire fall on me. Because some of the old saints knew it's not by might, nor by, nor by power, but by your spirit, saith the Lord. They understood that we need the spirit of God to release the fire. Come on, come on, come on. Whatever is hindering you today, come on, whatever's been blocking you today, whatever's been holding you today, God is releasing the fire. God God is releasing the fire. God is releasing the fire. God is releasing the fire. Come on, church. You need it. Call for it. You said you need him. You said you need him. Call the fire down. Call the fire down. Call the fire down. Come on, wake up, church. Wake up, church. Wake up, church. Every demon in my bloodline, every blockage, every, every obstacle, anything that's been holding me, fire from God. Fire from God. 
Fire from God. Fire from God. Release today. Release today. Release today. Release today. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Release today. Release today. Release today. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Things are breaking this morning. Oh, things are shifting this morning. Come on, she came. Come on, I need some people to run down here if you need more fire. Run down here. Come on, yes, my sister. Run down here. Run down here. If you don't know Jesus, run down here. You need a fire. If you don't know who he is, run down here. God's going to fill you up this morning. Come, come, come to the altar. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. Come to the altar. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Cry out to God. Cry out to God. Cry out to God. Cry out to God. <laughs> Cry out to God. Cry out to God. Shaka Baba. Come and lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Fire today. Fire. Come on, pray, 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 pray. He's in the room today. Come on, God wants to touch you. God wants to touch you. Release, release, release. Fire of the living God. Fire of the living God. Fire of the living God. Come on, lift your hands and worship him. Fire of the living God. Oh, Lord. 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 There's a lot to do. There's a lot to do. Kashaka. God is steering your faith again. Ah, Rabasa. Yes, Lord. Bless her. Bless her. Bless her. Fire. 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 Whoa. Yes, there it is. 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 When the enemy try to suck your spirit dry. When the enemy try to suck your faith dry. God is replenishing your fire today. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands to God. Release it now. Touch. Touch, touch, touch. Come on, pray, 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 pray. Touch. Chakarabasike. Touch. Kama ma 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 ma. Kora ma 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 ma. Kora ma. Doors are opening. Doors are opening. Shikaramasike. Doors are opening. When the enemy try to block opportunities, God says multiple doors are beginning to open more than you could ever think. God said, I brought you here. I brought you here because I want to accelerate. Accelerate your business. Accelerate. Accelerate in the realm of the spirit. Out of your belly shall throw rivers of living water today. Lift your hands. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on, pray. Pray. Pray, 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 pray. Come on, somebody reach out. Reach out. Reach out. Reach out. Come on. Reach out. Worship him. Worship him. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. Worship him. I need you to help me. Come and just worship him. He is passing by this moment. Your needs will supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes. Come on, just watch out. Worship him today. Come on. Reach 
child and touch the Lord as he passes by. You will find he's not too busy to it. Come on, Jesus is moving in this place. Jesus is moving in this place. He is passing by this moment. Your needs will supply. Come on, he's moving by, he's moving by. Reach, Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. Just one second. Just, Pastor, keep playing, please. Keep playing, Pastor. Hallelujah. Everyone lift your hands to Jesus quickly. Very quickly. I feel the spirit of God is just flowing over people right now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Listen to me. At the sound of my voice, if you don't know him, you have no power to fight the enemy that's fighting you. You have no power to overcome your own sin. You have no power to be free. You have no power. There is no drug, no, 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 nothing that can fill the hole inside you but Jesus. Amen. And if every eye closed, every hand weighed up, I lifted up, sorry. If you do not know Jesus, I want to give you an invitation this morning. Do not leave here without your Do not leave here without your team. Do not leave a changed person. Do not leave here redeemed and covered by the blood. If that's you and you do not know Jesus or you walked away from Jesus, I want you to take a step to the front so I can see you. Amen. If there's anybody here today, if we're all saved and wonderful, if you hear me on the street, if you're on the street, you need him. Come into this church. Come in now. You need him. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. In the Bible said it's appointed for man to die once and then is the judgment. Hallelujah. We don't know tomorrow. You need him today. You cannot delay. You cannot delay. You cannot delay. You cannot. People have been hit by cars yesterday. People have uh, been in car crashes, plane crashes. Things have happened. And they did not know where they were going. And where they were going is not where they expected to go. Because they denied the Christ. But the Lord is saying, I will not only give you my fire, I will not only give you my power, I will give you eternal life. I will give you eternal life that when you die, you will reign with me for heaven. This is not empty promises. This is real. 2,023 years ago, he died on the cross for your sins. He's calling you. He's calling you. He's calling you. Come on, let's cry to him this morning. Cry to him this morning. Cry to him this morning. Come on, cry to him this morning. He's filling you up this morning. Oh, he's filling you up this morning. Come on, just lift up your voice. 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 Up your voice. Come on, come on, come on. The Father is calling his own. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes.